Guys, it's finally here. Shopify has released new marketing automations for abandoned checkout, abandoned cart, and abandoned browse. These automations are now available to all Shopify merchants on every single plan. Hey guys, it's the Econ Bull here, and on this video we're going to explore these new out-of-the-box automations, and I'm gonna also show you how to further improve them so you can get the perfect sales recovery flow. We're going to see how automations work in Shopify. We're also going to super optimize the abandoned checkout automation with three email marketing reminders. And as a bonus, I'm going to show you how to improve the marketing emails for maximum conversions. So let's get started in three, two, one. Yeah. All right. So to access the automation section, you just have to go to your Shopify backend, click on marketing and then automations. Once you're here, you're going to click on create automation. And these are the new ones, abandoned checkout, abandoned cart, and abandoned product browse. If you click on any of these automations, you will see the option to turn them on. And let me tell you that they work right out of the box. But of course, we're going to optimize them a little bit. And we're going to change a few things on the abandoned product browse and the abandoned cart. But we're going to focus a lot on the abandoned checkout, where I'm going to show you how to do the email reminders. And that will be a great opportunity to see how you can expand on these automations and get the most out of it. So let's start with the abandoned product browse. So we click on it and we're going to edit the workflow. Now, every automation starts with a trigger. And in this case, is the trigger customer left online store. Now, let me show you a few other triggers that you can choose. For example, you have customer subscribed to email marketing, very useful to send welcome emails. You also have order cancel in case that you want to make an automation that sends an email to the customer saying that they need to take an additional step to complete their order. And also you have, for example, subscription contract created. I have this one because I offer subscriptions on my Shopify store. And if you're interested in that, check out my video where I talk about how to do subscriptions on your store. But this is basically so you have an idea of all the possible triggers that you can have. Keep in mind that you can only have one trigger per automation. So if you want to have the trigger customer abandons checkout, you will not be able to do it in this one. You will have to create a new automation just for that. Now, the next step that we have is to do a check. And this is going to check if the abandon type is equal to browse. If you want to see more in detail, we just click on it and you can see the details of the condition. So in this case, all of the conditions have to be met. And the condition is if abandon type is equal to browse, because you have three abandon types. You have browse, cart and checkout. But we're doing the abandoned product browse automation. So we're just going to keep it in browse. And right now we don't need to check anything else. But just so you understand how it works, let's add a criteria, another check that it needs to do. So you just click on add criteria. And here you can see all of the possible criteria that you can use. For example, let's say that you only want to continue this automation if a customer is a repeat customer, meaning that they have ordered at least one time from your store before. So we'll just go to customer. We scroll down until we see number of orders. We click on it. And now we can specify that this criteria has to be greater than number of orders one. You see how it updated here. Now we don't need to do this. I just wanted to show you. So let's just delete it by clicking on this trash can. Now, after it has checked the criteria and the conditions are met, it's going to do an action. It's going to wait for two hours. And after that, it's going to make a few more checks and then it's going to send a marketing email to remind the customer that they have left the store and they didn't purchase. So we can show them a few products that they browse. However, I don't like to wait for two hours. I think that's a lot of time. Let's actually change this to one hour, one hour. All right. After one hour, it's going to do a few more checks and let's click on it and check them out. All right. So it has to check if customer has not ordered since the abandonment. Because if the customer has already ordered, there's no point on sending them this abandoned browse email because he already converted, right? So the customer has no order since abandoned has to be equal to true. Also, last abandonment date has to be less than the date and time when the abandonment was created. All right, just so you don't have duplicates, you know, automations to the same customer. Also, the last car abandon date has to be less than when the abandonment automation was created. And finally, last checkout abandonment date has to be less than when the abandonment was 
created. And this is just to make sure that you're not sending them a browse abandonment automation when they might already have, for example, a cart abandonment automation or a checkout abandonment because the customer might have left your store, but then they came back and add the product to the cart. So you don't want to send them the abandoned browse. You want to send them the newer automation, the abandoned cart. Hope it makes sense. Let's continue. So let's also do another check. And this time we're gonna check if the customer hasn't received another abandonment email in the last 30 days. 30 days, such a long time. If you leave it like this, it's going to limit you a lot because imagine that you can only try to recover a sale once per month for every person. Of course, we don't want to spam the customer, but 30 days is just too long. Let's change this to one day. All right. And now we're going to check if one or more products view are in stock. All right. Yeah, this is a good one. Just to make sure that we don't send this automation if the product is not in stock. However, you could delete that step and offer them something else, right? So let's actually do that so you see how it's done. So we're going to hover over it and we're going to click on delete. All right, we're going to delete that step. And right after checking if the abandonment was less than one day, by the way, you see here how it still says last 30 days, even though we change it, let me just click on edit description and we are just going to put here. Just so when we go back and check the automation, we know what's going on, right? See, now it's changed. All right, that's good. So we're going to send after that, we're going to send a marketing email. All right, let's click on it and see the email itself that we're going to be sending automatically. So this is the email that Shopify automatically generated. When we go to edit the email, we can see that Shopify added this section. This will be populated based on the items that the customer has viewed. And you can also have some trending products right there. So, you know, if they really didn't want it to get that one, maybe they missed the other ones and you know, they can buy. And of course you can edit this email just as any regular Shopify email, super, you know, easy to do. You can even add the new express checkout, something like this. And they will, you know, when they click on it, they will go directly to the checkout and check out right there with ShopPay. I'm actually working on a video testing how much more those direct checkout converts compared to the regular, you know, go to the page and check out on the page. Stay tuned for that. Once you're done, just click on save and then you can turn on the workflow. Now let's really quickly edit the abandoned cart automation and make it just a little bit better. So we click on the abandoned cart and we're going to edit the workflow. This automation will also start when the customer left the online store, but this time it's gonna check if the abandoned type is equal to cart. Not browse anymore, cart. Good. So then it's gonna wait for four hours. Really quickly, let me change this because four hours is such a long time. The customer is hot, all right? He sold the product, he added it to the cart, he just got distracted and couldn't buy. You don't wanna wait four hours to remind him. You only wanna wait one hour. After that, we're gonna check if all conditions have to be met. Customer has no order since abandonment has to be equal to true. And then we do the checks just to not have duplicated automations, you know, last car abandonment date and last checkout abandonment date has to be less than when the abandonment was created at. All right. Now we're going to check if the customer hasn't received another abandonment email in the last 30 days. No, we want to change this to one. All right. Just like we did before. All right. And then it's going to check if one or more products in the cart are in stock. You know, I'm just going to delete it because if they don't have that one as an option, they might be interested on another one of my products. All right. And after that, we're going to send the marketing email. And you already know how to edit the marketing email. So we're not going to worry about that. Turn on the workflow. That's it. And now it's time for the fun part because we're making the abandoned checkout automation with two additional marketing email reminders. So let's go to the abandoned checkout template. Let's click on edit and edit the workflow. This time the trigger is going to be customer abandons checkout. And then it's going to check if the customer abandoned checkout was on the online store. Then it's going to check if the total price of the checkout is more than zero dollars. So, you know, there were some items there on the checkout. Then it's going to wait for 10 hours. No, we're going to change this to one hour because 
if they don't buy after that first email, we're gonna send them another email after 24 hours, reminding them that they have items that they haven't paid for yet. And if they don't buy, we're gonna send them a third email after 72 hours saying, hey, what's up? Just buy already, okay? And we're also going to include a coupon code on the third email with a 10% discount or 20% just to try to get that sale. So let's change this to one hour. All right, then we're gonna check if the customer has in place an order or abandoned order checkout since the start of this workflow. Then we're gonna check if one or more products in the checkouts are available and in stock, that's fine. And then we're going to send a marketing email. And I'm going to use this opportunity to edit this email and show you a few tips and tricks that generally increase conversions. All right, so let's just view the email. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is change the subject. You left items at checkout, it's so bland. You know, I'm gonna put something a little bit more triggering. Let's put something like action required. Your order is not completed. All right, and then the preview text, we're gonna personalize it. So we're gonna put hello, and then we're gonna use one of these magic tools and click first name so that Shopify automatically uses the first name of the customer. If Shopify doesn't have that information, we're just gonna put hello there and, you know, comma, your cart is ready for checkout, you know, something like that. And I'm just gonna leave this as it is right now. This is the automatic section. Products shown will match the items left in the checkout. You could add something else here, like a closing statement, just so, you know, they see the values of the company and yeah, it's good for now. This is just the first email. So let's just save that. Now let's add another action. And this time we're gonna put wait. And we're gonna wait for 24 hours. All right. And then we have to do a few checks. So we're gonna click on the plus sign and click on condition. And we're gonna check if all the conditions are met and add the criteria. Customer has no order since abandonment. That has to be true, so equal to true. Then we also have to add another criteria. Last checkout abandonment date has to be less than, and we're not going to select a date. We're gonna use one of the variables, all right? So we click on abandonment and last checkout abandonment date. After it checks if the customer hasn't already ordered and also that this is the latest abandonment checkout automation for this specific customer, then we're going to send a marketing email. So we click on action and we're gonna click on send marketing email. Let's select the email template and let's go for the abandoned checkout template, all right? And then we can change the subject to something like reminder, you still have items that need to be checked out, all right? And you can optimize the email just a little bit, but let's just click on save and focus on the third email. Let's add another action to wait now for three days. So let's put wait and choose 72 hours, all right? 72 hours, perfect. Now we need to do the checks, all right? So check on conditions. Add criteria, customer has no order since abandonment, equal to true, add criteria. Last checkout abandonment date is less than last checkout abandonment date. And if all of that is true, then we're going to perform an action, which will be to send a marketing email. Let's go for the abandonment checkout template again. So for the subject, we could put something like get 10% off on the items you left in your cart. And we can start the email with an image of the product packaging already on the hands of the customer with a 10% off banner right there, just so they can envision as they already receive the order, right? Then we put the coupon code. And of course, this is automatically generated with the products that the guy had on his cart. And then some additional products there, just to see if we can get some cross sales. And that's it. We're gonna save it. And let's see the automation one more time. So the, the automation starts when the customer abandons the checkout, does the checks, waits for one hour, does some more checks, and sends the first email marketing. Then if they don't purchase, it's gonna wait for 24 hours, do the checks, and send the second email marketing. If they don't buy, 
72 hours later, it's gonna do the checks and send the third and final email with the discount. Now, if the customer by now hasn't bought yet, then I don't know what to tell you, man. You could, I guess, continue, right? <laughs> For one week later, one month later, or I don't know, like every week, you can go crazy if you want, uh, but I will stop it right here. I think it's enough, right? Maybe he wasn't that interested after all. Now I have three more videos on my channel about automations where I dig deeper into more technical stuff like variables, internal emails, and also automation analytics. Go check them out if you are interested or watch this video where I show you how to optimize your website for conversions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm out.